the majority of post-apocalyptic fiction these days, the exposure most people experience comes in the form of stories involving a nuclear exchange that come from a western point of view, with creations like The Day After, Jericho, Alas Babylon, and more giving us a capitalist nation perspective after the world has ended. Thankfully, we have more Eastern fiction breaking into the marketplace today than ever before, with experiences like Dmitry Glukovsky's Metro series bringing us a Russian perspective. Three years ago, a team of Ukrainian developers, formed by former employees of GSC Game World, the studio responsible for the Stalker series, released Metro 2033, based on the novel Glukovsky published in Russia in 2005. Glukowski went on to publish a sequel, Metro 2034, four years later, but the plot and direction didn't fit with the pacing and nature required for a video game. With 2033's success as a sleeper hit, 4A Games and Glukowski teamed back up for Metro Less Light, a story that will become his next novel. In an age in which single-player games are far from the norm, does this next entry in the saga of life in Moscow after the bomb have the stuff to prove to publishers that a single-player shooter doesn't need to have multiplayer to be great? How I wished I could recall her face. The way she looked at me. The way she whispered that I have nothing to fear. I'd sell my soul just to recall that. I'd do that any day, any time. And I did. 20 years after a nuclear holocaust engulfed the planet, the last known survivors in Moscow, isolated from the rest of the world, hide in the tunnels of the former city's underground transit system. In the two decades since, after the survivors realized that the government wasn't going to return for them, a power struggle between various political factions has been waged throughout the metro while the threat of dangerous mutants has grown exponentially. To keep the war for power from expanding to the entire metro, and to combat the inhuman incursions, the Order of the Spartan Rangers acts as an independent faction, doing their best to instill peace while trying to save our species. One year after series hero Artyom trekked across the metro to save his station, the events of that cold day on the irradiated surface, when he stood upon the tower and watched fire rain down the Dark Ones, still haunts him. Artyom's connection to the Dark Ones and his new role as a ranger conflict within him. And it's only when Khan, a friend who helped guide him through parts of the metro a year prior, approaches him with the news that he saw a surviving child of the Dark Ones, does he begin to feel that this last one just might be his chance to redeem himself for the sins he committed the previous year. His journey will be just as hard as the first one though. War is brewing the metro as the legend of D6, an almost mythic command and control bunker for the pre-war era, previously discovered by Artyom and the Rangers, has all but been confirmed by the other factions, and it is clear that the one to take the bunker will control the entire metro. Artyom's second video game story is, in many ways, an extension of what 4A Games attempted to do in 2010. You will find yourself exploring new sections of the metro, while trying to mitigate the threat that the Reich and Red factions pose on the safety and security of the remaining stations. You will venture onto the surface and explore the ruins of Moscow. You interact with old comrades and new enemies alike. What you won't do is really explore a lot of new narrative ground. In the 10 to 12 hours that you will put into your first run through of Metro Last Light, you'll take note that while some of the new elements offer some really interesting propositions as to character interaction and possible plot lines, some of those elements don't really deliver as promised. Several plot twists that appear in later parts of the game don't exactly pay off that well, and either were completely transparent from the beginning or simply resolved in a quick and confusing manner. In fact, the only unique plot element I found myself really enjoying was a late game companion character that, while I won't spoil specifically due to it being a really big spoiler, offers quite a unique take on the conflict within the Metro. Beyond that, however, I found myself wanting a deeper take on the Metro universe, and while I received that in some aspects, by the end of the game, there were so many more that weren't even approached. We never take a closer look at Hansa. We never get to see Artyom return to previously explored territory like Exhibition Station a year after he left, and many elements of the series' fiction remains unrevealed. For me, there's a lot that could have been explored, and while I enjoyed the story 4A brought to the table, I wish it hadn't been so directed and allowed me the chance to learn more about the universe. 
If there is something that can be said with certainty about Metro 2033, it's that the gameplay was a love it or hate it one, as its complexity was very polarizing. The game's stealth system could be confusing at times, and the combat was a bit more balanced in favor of the enemies. 4 Games seems to have heard these complaints and have addressed them properly. The game's emphasis on stealth seems to have remained unchanged thankfully, but the mechanics have seen some refinement. Players can turn out or destroy most of the light sources found in the game, and your watch has a light indicator to tell you just when you are hidden or exposed. In addition, a music cue plays upon being glanced at by an enemy, but a player that quickly moves out of sight will be rewarded by having the enemy ignore what they saw. The AI for Metro 2033 seems to have been completely rewritten, and it is definitely for the better. In a manner quite reminiscent of Metal Gear Solid 2, the enemy will investigate tripped alarms, strange noises, and potential sightings of the player without going into a full alert mode, allowing the player some leniency. Once fully spotted though, the enemy will warn its teammates and then will attack you in force. In addition, tougher enemies will enter the area wearing heavier armor and potentially more deadly weapons. If they lose track of you however, they will enter a state of heightened alert, actively patrolling for you. The system works very well and is easily one of the most welcome new additions to the series. In addition to the new human AI, 4A has added in new mutant threats to be wary of. 2033 sadly limited most encounters to ones featuring Nasalises and Watchmen, and Last Light offers a new additions to the arsenal. Spiders, giant arachnids that burn by exposure to light, replace the lurkers at the principal hit and run foe, and their environments are just as creepy as the sound of them crawling through the walls. Shrimps, a water-based mutant, usually attack when the player either gets too close or causes loud noises, but they can be avoided relatively easily. Last Light also sees the addition of mutant boss battles, which can be very intense encounters. While some of the previous species from Metro 2033 do not make an appearance, the roster this time around seems much more varied and offers some unique challenges to overcome. Though a lot has changed gameplay-wise this time around, the best parts of Last Light's design are the ones that just haven't changed. The game retains the bullet currency system for the previous game, and keeps the dynamic of forcing the player to choose between killing enemies easier and having cash to spend later quite engaging. The ghosts of the Metro continue to offer creepy, pace-changing moments throughout the game, adding wonderful atmosphere at much-needed moments. The game's quote-unquote morality system is intact, offering moments both big and small that help determine the outcome of the story. The highlight of these elements, however, has to be the game's emphasis on exploration. While the Metro series is definitely a linear one in design, many areas offer branching paths as well as nooks and crannies to explore that could yield much desired items and equipment for the player. Finding ranger and bandit stashes in the dead city at the risk of setting off deadly traps is great, and exploring spider infested side areas that may hold enhanced weapons or military grade ammunition offers the player plenty of incentive to explore. Heck, several moments in the game either encourage or discourage doing so by tying into the quote-unquote morality system. I can easily recall several major instances throughout the experience that I either didn't investigate or did based on the implications of that decision. This definitely adds to the replay value and makes a second or even third playthrough all the more enticing. 4A Games chose to create their own engine, and Metro 2033's first use of it was a very nice freshman effort. Last Light features a refined graphics palette with a much better lighting system than before. The game features a much stronger particle effect system, which is a very nice touch. The makeshift nature of almost everything you saw in Metro 2033 is repeated to a very enjoyable degree, putting even more emphasis on just how desperate the world of the Metro actually is. Faces seem to be the only item left almost untouched, save for a few specific character models. As much as the graphic system has been refined, the sound design has remained relatively unchanged. Now this may sound like a mark against Last Light, but it's actually a strong compliment, as the previous title was easily one of the best I've heard in years. Everything from the wind flowing through the tunnels, to the scratching noises and growls of spiders and nasalysis, to even the weapons fire is sweet, sweet nectar for any audiophile out there. Even the voice work is decently done, though I implore you. Consider playing entirely in Russian. Believe me, a HUDless Russian voice playthrough is definitely the way to go. Metro 2033 was a sleeper hit for THQ three years ago, and the dedicated team at 4A Games certainly deserved to be praised for their hard work on the game. 
With Last Light, however, we have an even more wonderful experience to take in. While the story doesn't deliver in some departments, the overall experience is rather fantastic. If anything, the best description I can offer is that Last Light is a gameplay refinement on Metro 2033 that offers a continued story in a universe ripe with potential. It proves that a shooter doesn't need to have multiplayer to survive, and I'm very, very glad that a publisher like Deep Silver would be willing to rescue a title like Last Light from the debacle that was THQ's downfall. The transition year for two generations of consoles always yields a crop of very impressive titles, and if you were forced to choose only a handful of them to end a generation on, amongst greats like Bioshock Infinite and plenty potentiaries like The Last of Us, you'd be a fool not to consider Metro Last Light. <laughs>